Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to deploy our first Lambda function that we created in our previous lectures. And then we are going to see how we can remove the stack that will get created once we deploy our function. So deploying to AWS is easy with serverless framework. You just need to run the SLS or serverless deploy command. Along with that, you can also pass different options like what stage you want to deploy. It can be dev, prod, UAT as per your project's setup. And you can also define the region. You can override the region uh, in which you want to deploy your stack. Now, the same options you can provide in the serverless YAML file with some default values. And then you can override these values when you are deploying to different stages or different uh, regions of AWS in your account. So I'm going to add few more properties under provider before deploying my code. So I'm going to give region as US West 2 and I'm going to put the stage as dev. So here there's a option to uh, dynamically set your stage variable for example so you can either pick the value of stage from the command line option arguments that that we could pass and if nothing is passed in this case the default value will be set as def so that's it i'm going to save my code let's go to our command line prompt so i'm in my root project directory and here I'm going to run serverless deploy. So I'm going to provide my AWS profile that we set as TGG. So if you have multiple AWS profiles set um, in your command line, you can target your deployment to one of those profiles. So here, if you want, you can overwrite the region as US East one or any other region, you can override your uh, stage deployment to prod, for example. So right now I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to set my target profile and press enter. So while the deployment is going on, let's look at our uh, AWS console. So here I'm logged in into my TG admin account with administrator access. I'm in my US West 2 region. Now we're going to search for cloud formation. Click on it. So this will display all the stacks that we have in this region. If you can see, our service is nothing but a stack that gets deployed under cloud formation and the stack name will be the service name and then the environment. In this case, it's project egg one dash dev. Now our project is already deployed. Let's click on the stack. So here you will get all the details about our stack. So under events, you will see all the changes that were done to this stack, all the updates. Under resources, you will find different AWS resources that were created as part of your service. So here you can see our serverless framework has deployed an API gateway. So here we have deployed our Lambda function as a REST API. So there are two ways in which you can deploy your APIs. One is HTTP and another is REST API. We'll see the difference between the two. So here REST API is deployed. So you can, let's open it. So here you can see that our hello world path is deployed as a get function. If you click on it, here you can see that your API gateway with path hello world as get method gets redirected to our Lambda function. We also have our Lambda function deployed here with the service name, then 
the stage and the name of the function and then some other resources will be deployed to you know provide permission for api gateway to be able to access the lambda function then some other permissions or roles will be created to allow the lambda function to create uh, log groups where aws will create or send all the logs uh, created by the function so these are different resources that gets created the serverless yaml file when we deployed our code so you can see that you don't have to worry about you know installing the infrastructure and connecting all the pieces together providing the right permissions for log groups and you know for lambda execution serverless framework does that for you but how does it do that so here after the deployment a new folder called dot serverless is created for us in our project root directory so what serverless framework does for you is it transforms your serverless yaml file into the cloud formation template that aws understands so we can see two different json templates are created the first one is to create the serverless deployment bucket and assign it a bucket policy the another one is to actually create all the resources that are required to deploy our code along with the rest api this template which gets created by serverless framework for us has created a hello world log group for our lambda function a role is created for the lambda execution this is the actual lambda function which gets deployed and some other resources like api rest api object that gets created and then other resources related to api gateway for example the get method here the options method here and then a permission for API gateway to be able to execute the Lambda function. And then of course, there are a few output values. Outputs are nothing but um, the ARN names or uh, the resource name for all the resources that get created after deployment of these templates. Now how serverless deploys our code? So it first um, create these templates and upload them into our deployment bucket which includes all the json files and also the code um, that we wrote under all the different handlers and functions so all the code gets converted into a zip file and serverless also maintains the state of of, of overall stack so that the next time when we do the update uh, it either looks into the local serverless state.json file or it can fetch this file back from the deployment bucket and look for all the updates that needs to be turned to the stack. So you can see how using serverless framework uh, and by writing just few lines of configuration, we are able to deploy our Lambda function with API gateway and all the needed permissions. So for a developer, it makes the life easier by focusing on the business logic and not worry much about managing and creating all the different cloud formation resources. So that's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll see how we can uh, test our deployed function using Postman. And then we'll see how we can discard our whole stack.